And now we're looking at a very robust type of question here, estimating quantity, uh, estimating takeoff quantity. So we're looking at this problem statement. So let's analyze every drop of ink, make certain that we're aware of what we have in front of us to make a logical and comprehensive analysis and mathematical analysis of the problem statement that we're looking for to find our answer. Okay, so in this case, we have a 450 foot length canal that's to be lined with concrete for erosion control. The next sentence, and I stress to you, I've seen through the years, people forget, candidates forget to add the waste factor, right? So this is a percentage base. So if you see this on the exam, you take your pencil and you say, okay, I got to remember to add the percentage, okay, of waste. Often, if you don't do this uh, very, very often, you'll forget that. And I've seen people do that, as well as for factors of safety. Often a problem statement will say, add a factor of safety of two. They do, everything is perfect. All the examples are perfect, the calculations and all. But they forget about multiplying that by two. So here, remember to flag it for yourself. Make certain you don't make that mistake because one of the answers in the problem statement will have it without the 10%. You'll calculate this out. And what you'll find is, well, you got your answer. Perfect. You got the answer that you calculated and it matches up with one of the answers that are there. If you don't have the 10% in there, you'll have the wrong answer. But all the confidence that you did it right. And so what we see here is that the material unit cost for concrete and curing compound based on other recent projects are $98 and $40 for a five-gallon pail of material. Now, this is not divisible. Don't think that, well, okay, it's $8 a gallon. So if I only need one gallon, I'm going to pay $8. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to buy five gallons. So if you came up with a 5.00001 gallon, right? You got to buy two, two. So you spend $40, uh, $80, not $5. So be very careful with this. In estimating, rounding is mathematical rounding. We'll see that as we move through the rest of the, the section here. Next, the last sentence is project specifications require an application rate of a curing compound of one gallon per 300 square feet. And so let's look at the illustration and kind of uh, visualize what we're doing. Make it a three-dimensional object for yourself, okay? So that's the first thing you want to do. All right, so that's your three-dimensional object here. So we're doing this, right? And so we have this as a three-dimensional object, and we note that this is 450 feet. So once you see this, you says, wow, okay, now I see what's going on. And even further enhancing what we're doing here, the concrete, the cross-sectional area for the concrete that we're placing here, I'm enhancing with my yellow pencil right now, giving you that view in a clearer view. So you can always do this on the exam. And then we have the geometry of the shape. We see that the bottom is 19 feet, 20 feet deep, and we're also given the H to V. So we have V and H. So we have H to V as being three to two. Okay, so all this is put together for you. And so we need to do some geometry. So effectively we need to find this because it's a hypotenuse as to what we need to do. And two, that's the concrete component, the yellow. And we see it as eight inches. However, let's take a look at the curing compound. Well, the curing compound, if you're familiar with the term, it's basically a paint Okay, it's a liquid applied uh, surface coating that is uh, use, that's used on the concrete. So we basically paint the surface of it after we pour the concrete. And the curing compound helps with strength development of the concrete itself. In concrete, you, you mix uh, the components with water. And you want that water and the Portland cement, that chemistry action there, to be as uh, the longest possible. So you want it to that water, that moisture to, to actually uh, strengthen as time goes on. And so what we do is we just put a paint. That paint dries and, and it's fugitive in the sense that it's going to evaporate. But we apply it and at that point it helps with the strength development of the, of the concrete. And so similar, it's a one gallon per 300 square feet. So it's somewhat liquidy 
If you buy a gallon of paint, usually a gallon of paint, paint your house, you need one gallon cover about 200, 225 square feet. And so this one gives you that idea of the paint component. So what we're going to look for is the cost for the concrete and the cost for the curing compound. So we have to do some geometry. So we turn the page and we see that here. Once again, I'll reinforce what we're doing here. So this is our trapezoidal shape. So we want to know the geometry of the shape because at this point, if we're going down 20 feet, we're going over 30 feet, right? So that's how we do the math for that. So if we go down 20 feet, we find that we go over 30 feet. And so now we want to calculate out the hypotenuse of that. And so we'd use Pythagorean theorem and we come up with 36. The cross-sectional area, therefore, is 60.74. So the blue lines that I drew up on the screen, if that's the cross-sectional area, it's 60.74 square feet. But we're using it for 450. Divide everything in feet, cubic feet, to cubic yards, because that's the measure that we have in the costs. So we have cubic yards. Don't forget the 10%. As I said, it's a common mistake, but if you pay attention to this, you'll see very, very quickly, add that 10% to it. That's your waste factor. And so as a result, it's going to cost you 109000 Let's continue with our analysis and find the curing compound. The curing compound is the surface of the canal. So we already know that. And so that's that, uh, that trapezoidal shape that we have. And so we want to multiply that by 450. So we have 41,000 square feet. The quantity of the curing compound, divide that out by the 300 square feet per gallon, is 163. We're going to add the 10% as we've done. We remember that. And when we do that, we can only buy it per 5-gallon pail. And so we come up with 30.07. Now you have a choice to make. What are you going to be? At? What's your answer going to be? In estimating, you're always going to round up, okay, because you need the right amount of material. If you can only buy it in five gallon pails, you're going to round up. And so you're going to use 31 containers, and that's how you get your final answer. So this is an important aspect. Okay, so it's good engineering judgment, right? We're not just blindly rounding up or rounding down. We're reading the problem statement, understanding the concept behind the problem statement, and coming up with a good engineering judgment aspect to the solution. Okay, So so there's a question here. Could you add the waste factor at the beginning and, just multi and multiply your length by 110%? Well, if you do the math this way, yes, you can do that, but be careful, okay? Be very, very careful. As I said yesterday, there are many ways of solving these problems. If your solution step comes up with this, you've got it, right? This is the best way and the, the simplest form. If you follow these instructions, people who, are, who don't do this very often I find these steps as being very adequate in their analysis. If you do this every single day, then you can get more and more, okay, more and more uh, involved in speeding this up, as you as you know. Okay, so if you do this in work every single day, obviously there's there are quicker steps to it, but we're learning, and that's the importance of it.